Hello, thank you for watching. Today I'm going to score a pumpkin loaf, the one that has all of the edges that are pushing out and it looks like a pumpkin. Uh, this is one that a lot of people are intimidated by. It's really not nearly as scary and much more simple than it looks. So right here, I have soaking some string. It's a kitchen twine or a cotton thin string in, it's getting knotted, in canola oil. Just the cheap oil. No need to do anything fancy. And I'm gonna stretch it across the loaf. I have four of these because I want eight sections. I'm gonna maybe be a little more quiet during this one because when I talk, I tend to mess things up. So there we go. This is a loaf. Um, a friend of mine wants to purchase for me from me for her family's Thanksgiving. I'm doing it early and I'm going to freeze it just in case it messes up. Oh, great. First time ever my strings get, <laughs> get knotted. Let's see. I may be cutting this portion of the video out. Okay, there we go. We came loose. Fun times. And here we are. Last one, and I do kind of run my fingers down the string to get the excess oil off. This is, the oil is so that when you go to take the string off at the end, uh, after it's baked and cooled, it will come off easily. Get out of the water there, okay. So, I'm gonna put my bread sling right here, and I'm gonna now put my turntable over top, and we're just gonna give it a big swift flip like that. And I'm not worrying about where those strings are right now. Make sure I'm centered up. And I wanna apologize for being in, is this portrait mode? Um, I'm giving it a try here because it seems like it's harder to get a good angle on, you know, a good advantageous angle for seeing what I'm doing. Oops, okay. Not the smoothest video I've ever done. And the more I talk, the more likely I am to screw up. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for just a minute while I rinse my hand. That lets it soak just a minute. There we go, so that it doesn't kind of turn pasty when I put this on. Paying special attention to the edges, as always, because those are the areas that tend to get neglected. This is rice flour. Um, sometimes with pumpkin loaves, I won't do the rice flour because I want it kind of brown. But because it's for Thanksgiving and it's kind of special, I want this to stand out for her. And by the way, it's an all bread flour loaf. So this is a 500 gram loaf of bread flour. Um, again, 20% inoculation, 65% uh, hydration and uh, two percent salt i usually do two and a half to three percent for me because i like it salty but not everyone is like me so there we go and i think most of the world doesn't want food as salty as i do by the way i actually have a low sodium blood levels so my doctor said that probably is why i crave salt and it's okay for me to eat salt so i have a pass okay Just gonna tie these so they kind of meet up in the middle there. I'm doing them kind of tight. Do you see that? It's because when I release the tension after I'm done tying this little knot, it's gonna spring back out to some degree. You are not going to get them all even. Uh, we're gonna do our best, but it won't necessarily happen. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these now so I can clearly see. I cut those strings really long. I do like to get them long so I have plenty to work with, but I overdid it a little bit there. So now I can kind of see where I'm going with the remaining ties. And just take the ones that are across from each other. Give it a good pull. I'm hoping that this will rise up quite a bit in the oven. And like I said, if it doesn't, it'll still be a pretty loaf. And I will make her a new one. And I'll do it in the smaller banneton. Banneton? Banneton? How do you say it? Just go ahead and cut this while it's in my hands. But that's okay. If they're not, pumpkins don't grow perfect and the sourdough never scores perfectly. 
like I've said in some of my Instagram ones, this the YouTube channel is new, but in Instagram ones I've put up, I've said, the people who have the perfect loaves, normally there was at least one try before that, and maybe three, four, five. Okay, so now I'm going to take the handy dandy, whoops, wooden skewer that I dropped. There we go. And I'm going to plan out my design. So I did some sketching on paper, and I think I know. Let me, let me try this. I'm going to try doing a little point right here. And then I'm going to bring little lines up. And then how about if we, we're going to do little cross hatches there with the scissors? And is it overkill to do? Um, little stripes going like that. I don't know. I kind of like that. So let me do that every other one. And we're just going to see how it looks. I'm, I'm going to play with this. And sometimes, you know, even though I've got lines drawn, I wind up doing something a little bit different once I start cutting because reality sets in as far as how the bread is spreading or, you know, other things. So that'll be that, and I don't need to mark that, and then we'll go up, an upward direction like this. Next one, same thing. We're going to come... Make sure I've got the right distance. And you know, you don't have to mark or with uh, the same kind of thing I do. I mean, if you find another implement that you think will work just as well, use it. You could get a paper doily and set it on top, you know, of, of a wet loaf and then put your rice flour on that and use it for a, for a stencil. I would recommend for your first few, whoops, that is not good. For your, whoops, I forgot to do the thingy. Uh, for your first few scores, that you stay pretty simple. So take a look at my last video that had the simple wheat stalks. This one's going to be narrower. It's going to have a harder time. Okay. And I won't stay right on those. The trick is going to be not to cut through that string when it comes time to do these side things. So then here, let's see what happens if we go the opposite direction with the cross hatches, how that looks. Do we want to do that? Or do we want to keep going up like a little wheat stalk in between? I like the wheat stalk. Okay, so I don't need to, I don't need to score for that. Okay, deep breath. Here we go. So I'm just going to do my little V shape, and then I'm going to do a line down, and I'm going to do a line up next to it. We're doing the narrow one first and getting that over with, and then we're going to do our little lines coming out. And try well I did knock some of those into that I, I probably should have tried to have kept those from connecting but it's going to be what it's going to be an oven spring might kind of split them up anyway all righty now we're going to come over here do the same thing I'm not really seeing my pattern too good make sure my I have it these points have a tendency to go farther down as I go around the lobe, so I have to kind of be cognizant of where I am, what I'm doing, so that they end up pretty much even. Oh no, I guess this is the, the smaller one. Oof, I made that very small. Look at that. That's going to be really narrow. Okay, here we go. And do one right here. Let's do our little. Will it be easier from this angle? Let's find out. Every loaf is a learning experience. Let that line intersected. And sometimes you could just swear by the way you scored. <coughs> Pardon me. I coughed off to the side. I did not cut on, cough on the bread. 
um, that that it's going to split in a certain place and it turns out doing something completely different. Sourdough has a mind of its own. You can see I went back to back to that the method of bringing it over close to me. Don't cut the Don't cut the string. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do a little wheat stalk on each one going up the same way I showed in my simple sourdough, my simple scoring like this. Okay. Now let's do this one. And these are going to be every other one. Did I do the little, yeah, I did a little line at the top. So we're just gonna real quick cross hatch on the way up and real quick cross hatch on the way up here. And a little line there. And the last one, cross hatch up. In here. Well, oh, that one's looking wrinkly, isn't it? Probably was a big air bubble in there. I found that always doesn't factor into oven springs. Sometimes it does. Okay, so now I'm going to go around and I'm going to more deeply cut the vertical lines because I want to make these my main score. Since we don't have an ear or anything that we're cutting here, we really want to make sure we give it a place to split where we want it to split, not where the bread just arbitrarily splits because it has risen and has to go somewhere. Here, nice deep here. Okay, and now for the last touch. See these lines right here? that are going down. We're just gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut to make little squares. And I'm counting how many, one, two, three, four, five. So I was, I had a German grandma and she really helped raise me. I spent a lot of time with her growing up. And that's where I get these exacting German tendencies I mean, the truth is I'm American, but wow, do I act German sometime with wanting everything really even. Okay, so I'm going to take a small brush. I'm gonna brush all of this excess flour off so it doesn't make a mess in my Dutch oven. I'm gonna lift this in. The Dutch oven has been heating since I started scoring this at 450. When I get it in the Dutch oven and put the Dutch oven in my oven, I will lower the temperature to 425 and bake it for about 25 minutes. There we go. Thank you for watching. And now here we are back in portrait mode because quite frankly, I don't know what I'm doing. Please forgive the sound effects. That is the neurotic dog spinning in circles and making noises because once again, he gets happy when I talk. All right, so I dipped this in oil and you're about to see why. If I wouldn't have, it would have torn particularly across the bottom here where it's kind of baked in. Hopefully that's not gonna happen here. So let's watch. I'm going to take each one of these, just go ahead and cut them now. Also, I'm messing with sourdough, and um, both of my dogs love sourdough. But he's not getting any of this, because it's not for us. 
So I'm very carefully, I'm not making sure I don't get into the bread. It was actually pretty easy. It didn't threaten to tear the bread at all when I cut it. And now I'm just gonna pull these back. See how far we can get with most of them. This is kind of a satisfying feeling, honestly. That one was way in there. And sometimes when people uh, have loaves that are shaped like this, they cut them in sections like pie because, see, this was so deeply in there, it's almost cut anyway. So now I'm just going to, that it really rose up around that. Just pull them off at the bottom like this. I think this is fun. I like making pumpkin shaped loaves just so I can do this. And that one comes all the way out. Oh, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And that one is gone. And that one is gone. And that one is gone. So that's the bottom. There's the top. Pretty pumpkin shaped loaf. And somebody is going to enjoy this at Thanksgiving. Thank you very, very much for spending some of your time with me. I know time is valuable. And the fact that you spent a little bit of time to watch this, I'm, I'm honored, really. Thank you very much. If you would like, comment, share, you know the drill. But it, it helps me and encourages me and lets me know that people are really watching this and that I should keep going. All righty. Thanks a bunch. See you next time. This is the crazy happy dog that makes all the noise. That's the calm one back there.